Oh, here we are at four o'clock, okay? Very, very different than the light at two o'clock. At two o'clock, if you recall, again, we wanted to put the subject between us and the sun. This is different. If we tried to put our subjects between us and the sun consistently, which we can do, however, in order to do that, we need to sort of scrim ourselves from the light itself. Adam, if you can come get a picture here and notice that if we shoot directly into this light now, we're gonna be involved with a tremendous amount of flare. So if I shot directly into them right now, I'm gonna have a little bit of trouble with this light. So how do we deal with that? Very simple. We have all kinds of trees, we have shadows, we have shadows from poles. I'm looking for that. The other thing that I'll do, I look for patches of light. Here's a patch, and there's a patch of shadow behind the camera. So what I'm gonna do, you'll notice, very, very difficult light here. I can't shoot that without flare. So I'm gonna go back into this shadowed area, a few steps back, use the shadow cast by this tree, juxtapose and shoot. Now, there's another thing that I wanted to talk about, seeing three-dimensionally. What the hell does that mean? Pretty simple. Foreground, subject, background. Those three things. When I juxtapose my background against my subject, I'm bobbing, weaving, moving up, down, sideways, so that my composition becomes pleasing to my eye. I see within my mind's eye. I see in focal lengths. I see in apertures. I see the depth of field that I'm gonna get at 2.8 or four or more, which I generally don't use. But what I'm gonna do here, um, for the sake of argument, I'm, I'm at 1,000 at four. I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna take a quick frame. I'm gonna back up a little bit because I was getting flare. I'm gonna use the shadow right about there. I'm a little bit under. I'm gonna open up one stop. And I've got the perfect exposure at a 500th at four at ISO 200. I've got the exposure now. I can just shoot. The thing that I'm concerned about right now is this flare. So I'm gonna make sure that I stay uh, in the cast of the shadow there. And you guys can just do your thing and interact and I can just compose. I'm getting the fountain. I'm getting that light on her face. It's gorgeous. The difference between this light and the two o'clock and 12 o'clock light, once again, is that there are times we just simply can't shoot directly into the direction of the sun. We have to block ourselves. So look for items, whether it be, hey, this, tele this, this light pole might cast a shadow, a telephone pole. Sometimes I'll take my assistant and post her somewhere so that I can shoot into the light, okay? One of the other elements I'd like to discuss is composition because the thing that we're looking for, the holy grail, is the point where our technical elements are so innate, all we're thinking about is making the picture. We're thinking about composition. We're, see we're thinking about seeing focal length, seeing depth of field, feeling it within our mind's eye. So what I'd like to do right now is, Adam, if you'll kind of come with me a little bit, and if you can stay with me, maybe behind me a little bit, and take a look at what I'm seeing. Right now, I see Sarah's face with that beautiful rim light juxtaposed against that dark background, okay? The other thing that I see right here is that light, uh, I'm sorry, the flagpole sticking out of Sammy's head. I don't want that. How do I correct that? Simple, just shift just a little bit over to my right. The other thing that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move this way a little bit, and now the fountain is sticking out of Sarah's head. I don't want that. How do I correct that? It's a little bit of movement. It's a continuous bob, weave, and just kind of move, feel the composition. For lack of a better word, it is a dance with the composition. 
and it's very subtle. It's moving with it. The other thing that you'll notice when that fountain is juxtaposed against the highlight against Sarah's face, we lose that highlight because there's not a degree of exposure variance between the highlight and the background, seeing three-dimensionally. That's how you begin to learn about composition. One of the things I'm going to try to do now is find another area where I can use the light directionally. So what I like to do, and a whole other lesson that we're going to do, is a light hunt. I'm going to literally just hunt for good light. So I'm going to sort of lead, and I'm going to have my couple. You know what I'm going to do? Sammy, take Sarah by the hand and just kind of take a walk to that side of the park. In fact, what you can even do is take a nice stroll right down this alleyway right here, right down the alley, all the way around that fountain and walk straight down. And what I'm going to do, I like to observe light. Sometimes when I'm in a park, I'm going to look at the people. I look at the light falling on that woman over there. I'm going to look at the light falling on my couple, obviously. And as they walk down, as we move a little closer to them, as soon as they as soon as they dart out into the area where that cyclist is, that's when this gorgeous light is going to strike them. It's very simple to just do a hand-holding picture walking right away from me. We've already established our exposure value before, about a 500 f4 200. I'm not going to be far off from that. I'm going to take a picture, glance, and adjust if necessary. You guys can just keep walking straight down and hold each other's hand. This is what I tell couples often, just hold hands. Don't take your eyes off each other. Walk with each other, talk with each other. Every once in a while, stop them, grab them, kiss them, hug them, and just keep walking. So this is another picture. What we're trying to do is get variety, get as many different looks as possible. This is not a picture yet. I'm still waiting. Sometimes they're gonna look back, they're gonna think I'm shooting, but this is not my picture yet. I'm waiting for them to get out into the light. Keep going, guys. You're going to see it as soon as they walk out into it. And there it is. Good. You can stop right there just for a second. With all this activity going on in the park, what the heck am I supposed to do? The answer is simple. Use the long glass. Isolate my subject. What am I going to do? I'm going to get down, I'm going to shoot up at them, and I'm going to isolate so that I'm just going to have the frame maybe right where the stitching is on the back of her gown, maybe right where Sammy's elbow cuts into his body, and I'm going to shoot up. I've got that van in the background, so the three-dimensional vision that I'm going to employ here is going to give me a composition that's going to allow me to exclude that filthy background that I'm not looking to get in my photo here. A quick glance, a quick adjustment. Good, Sammy. You guys are doing great. That light is just absolutely perfect. The other thing that I'm in, I'm in a shadowed area from this tree. And once again, guys, just face each other just one more time. And Adam, you can just see that gorgeous rim light right on Sammy's face. That's really what I'm after. This light is perfect. It's 4 o'clock in the afternoon. It's pretty harsh. There's not a cloud in the sky. We're using it. And like I said before, let's go find some directional light. Right now, what I'm seeing is a really cool patch of sun right over there. The sun is up in that area. I know that I'm going to be able to use some directional light over there, and I'm going to show you how in just a second. This area here is ideal. I'm in a complete shadowed area. I'm completely scrimmed off from any direct light that's going to flare my lens. I want you to watch what happens when Sarah walks out into that light. And all I want you to do, Sarah, you're going to walk directly out this way. Sammy, hold her left hand and just take a walk. And Sarah, keep going. Good. Now, keep looking at Sammy while you're doing this. Nice and so a little to your left, Sammy. A little to your left. There you go. Now watch this light hitting Sarah. 
Keep going, guys. Right there. Good. And Sammy, take one step back for me. Good. Look at that light on Sarah's face right now. This is absolutely stunning. Right here. How do we capture it? Think about it for a second. This area here is so much hotter than any other area. Maybe the dress a little bit. But I would venture to say that this exposure value is going to be similar. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to speed my shutter up a little bit, and I'm going to really nail the exposure right here. We're going to make some beautifully dramatic images because this area, when brought down to the proper exposure, is going to make everything else go nice and dark. No Photoshop, no post-production, but straight out of camera, beautiful, stunning images. Why? Directional light. Here's how I'm going to do it. If you notice, I'm juxtaposing my highlight against nice, dark, green trees. Okay, I'm going to speed my shutter up just a little bit automatically. Take a quick glance. I was at a 500th of 4. I'm going to speed it up to about an 800th of a second at f4. Beautiful. I know that it's going to be great. Gorgeous. And you guys can just do your thing. Good. All I'm doing is using the light. And here's another thing I'd like to point out. I'm often asked, Cliff, what do you do with your couples? Well, I don't pose them, and there's nothing wrong with posing them. It's an art in itself. But my preference, personally, is to put the couples in the best lighting situation, best compositional scenario, and let them interact naturally. Now, not every couple is going to have the chemistry of Sammy and Sarah. I admit that. However, everyone is going to be a little bit different. This light is beautiful. Compositional scenario, because I'm seeing three-dimensionally, is going to be terrific. And what are they doing? They're just giving me moment after moment after moment. My exposure's dead on, the moments are dead on. This is a can't miss. Looking at the patterns on the ground, we can see bright sun, we can see dark shadow. What that tells me is that somehow, some way, there's going to be some dramatic images that can be made there. That's all I'm looking for. I'm going to go find it and then take a look where it's falling on my subject once I put a minute. So let's head to that light. Just to reiterate, and I want to keep reiterating throughout these lessons, with regard to technical elements and camera settings, I was pretty clear on where my exposure value needed to be approximately. It's not going to vary a whole great deal. So when I chose to use manual, there was a reason as opposed to aperture priority. If I was to use aperture priority, my exposures would have been all over the place a little bit. Could I have used it? Yes. Could I have used exposure compensation to get where I needed to be? Yes. But I chose manual because I was only going to be within a stop or so with my shutter speed. Can you guys stay there for one second? And one of the things I'd like the camera to, the, to point out, can you guys look over here just for a second? Look how horrendously harsh that light is right now. Even though it's a little after 4 in the afternoon, we can't use that. If we did, We'd get squinting, we'd get, it's just, it is just harsh, harsh light. So whenever you have a bright sunny day like this, don't try to use this light in this fashion. Instead, come with me, and we'll show you how to use it. That is how I'm gonna use this light. Before, with that sun directly on them, it was harsh, it was horrendous. What we're doing here, very similar to before, I'm gonna squat down, remember, once again, to put the light and juxtapose that highlight up against those trees. I've already got my exposure value nailed to what it was before. And here we go. Good, that's gorgeous, gorgeous light. And Sarah makes it really difficult. So, we're going to find a little bit uh, more to use. I hope you're enjoying the lesson. Once we've got our scene, our exposure value, what's next? Well, they're just going at it like they always do. 
I've worked with this couple many times. They're amazing. So as a photographer, what's my goal now? I've made the picture horizontally of them just interacting, all these wonderful, sweet moments. But what about maybe vertically? What about taking the two of them when they get closer together and putting them in the extreme bottom of my frame? As they're interacting, I'm going to use all this empty space at the top. There it is. Boom. And just extreme composition using empty space. And there's an old expression that I like to use. One man's empty space is another man's composition. Some people might say, well, they're not centered. All images weren't meant to be centered. So when you get a situation like this where everything is just perfect and flowing, work the situation. See the moment, grab the moment, and then work that situation to get a better, more compelling moment from that situation. Try it. One of the things I'd like to demonstrate right now is with directional light, what happens when the light falling on our subject, how harsh it may look on their face, how it changes when our direction changes. So if we can turn the camera around, we can look at Sammy and Sarah right now and see how harsh this light is. All I'm going to do right now is one thing, change my position. By moving our position, we're going to change the entire complexion of this shot. So follow me this way. It's already different right here. And here, it's really interesting. I've got the light coming through those trees off in the distance. If I shoot this at 2.8, all of that is just going to be beautifully blurred. Let me see what I can do with this shot. OK, a quick adjustment. I'm at an 800th of a second at 2.8, and I know this is perfect. You guys just do your thing there, guys. Good. Good. I don't even have to go any further. That is absolutely stunning. What did I just do? Think about it. I went from harsh, harsh conditions to using that light to create texture, dimension, and mood because I moved my position instead of having the subject having to move. Really interesting. Try it.